I, as we are, we are able access to the public and we are, uh, as of now, there are two members of the public in our, um, in our audience. And I'm gonna call us to order and ask you to um, signify your presence vocally. Christine. Here. Thank you, Alex. Here. Sharon. Here. Sean. Here. Anika. Here. And Austin Sarrett is here. And we are joined by Ken Romero from our fabulous, um, our fabulous uh, building owner's manual, building owner's representative. And, um, and, uh, and by um, Angela. So, okay. So the first item of business is the approval of the minutes of uh, February 15th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay, um, corrections to the minutes. Okay, we ready to vote on the minutes. So um, a call on you and yes, you vote to approve the minutes or no, you don't vote to approve the minutes. Christine. Approve. Thank you. Alex. Yes. Thank you. Sharon. Yes. Thank you. Anika. Yes. Thank you. Sean. Yes. And the town manager. Yes. <laughs> He gets the prize for the most enthusiastic support of the minutes. And I Austin, love minutes. <laughs> Austin votes. Um, Austin votes yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda. By the way, it's just terrific to see you all. And uh, before we do the agenda, I just want to say, like everybody else, um, you know, we we are stunned, saddened, fearful and uh, supportive. There's a great headline in a newspaper that says, we are all Ukrainians now. And uh, I feel ever more privileged to live in this wonderful town. Okay, Sean, finance update. So maybe, uh, can you make me co-host or give me access to share my screen? I'll try to, trying to spice these finance updates up um, Wait a little bit. Way to go. Um, Angie, can we do that? There you go. So Angie's going to make you okay, there co it is. co host. So, yeah. So don't mind the spelling. Um, <laughs> but just so people have a sense of some of the reports that we provide to Sharon for her reporting. Um, this is the spreadsheet that we're maintaining for her. Uh, so we have our first grant disbursement here. Um, so that's the money coming in. That's that first milestone payment with, um, with signing the contract. And then each month we're updating the interest. So you can see we've just mm -hmm. after two months, we've already generated um, you know, $1,700. Um, and that will continue to add up throughout the life of the project, especially as we add additional grant disbursements in there. So. That is it for the financial update for today because there has not been much changing since the last time. Um, other than we are still we're still working with the OPMs and the uh, to get a design contract signed. Great, thank you, thank you, Sean. I like the numbers are moving in the right direction, so that's mm -hmm. great. It's growing. Yep, it's growing. So, any questions for Sean, Sean, uh, for Sean about the financial update? The only other, other thing I'll say quickly is um, our financial advisor has started putting together updated scenarios and just, I think I maybe alluded to this in the past, but um, interest rates are starting to tick upward. So it's just something to keep in mind. They're, they're still good, but they're not quite, yeah, he has revised upward his estimates for the life of the project in terms of um, the interest rate assumption. So I'll share those with the group at some point once they're, they're sort of finalized. Great, thank you very much. Okay, the next item, item number four on the agenda is a report from Collier's, Ken Romero. 
Uh, so as Sean alluded to, we've been working with FAA at this point, and uh, Ken and I have gotten to a, a fee and also I'll say the services that we feel are fair and just and are at a point that we'd like to share that and uh, you know get input and hopefully a, a motion at some point shortly to go ahead and hire FAA. I know there's some other discussions going on, so I didn't want to bring that uh, to the committee now because I know there's still, uh, again, some on, ongoing discussions. So uh, at this point, we do have uh, a fee proposal that we do find acceptable to them. Uh, Sharon and I started talking yesterday and then again a little bit today. Um, just about uh, deed, you know, restrictions and transfer of the building, that type of thing. So uh, that's in process. And then we also did talk briefly about uh, her and her staff are putting together their requirements for temporary spaces or space, depending on what we can find. So we can start looking into that. So those, I believe, are the three tasks that we had uh, from the last meeting as I go down my list. I don't know if there's uh, any questions or comments so i have a question which i think maybe sharon can can answer can maybe you can can you just remind us about what the mblc requirements are in terms of uh shovels in the ground so to speak when do we have to start construction yeah it's uh there is a requirement for that it's going to be uh correct me if i'm wrong sharon it's just about two years from now, but we're hoping, as Sean alluded to, to go before them because we we have never seen a project financially get a better buy by waiting longer. Prices typically tick up. So at this point, we're not looking to be in jeopardy of you know having that be our issue. Because again, uh, the, the design team has limitations on their contract as they proposed right. it along with their sub consultants and then naturally interest rates and just uh, labor rates never go down. So what, it's what, what about is your two most... years, about two years from now, I think is what it was. If that's what MBLC requires. Uh, yeah. What is your most optimistic projection of when we could really get started? Uh, as far as going to bid, or are you saying actually uh, start construction itself? It's starting construction. Uh, that's going to be, you know, no less than about a year, I'm going to say year and four to six months, about a okay. year and a half. Okay. So we, we okay. shouldn't be in jeopardy again of that. Right. Thanks. Other questions for Colliers? Okay, Ken, thank you. Thanks for the work that you're, you're doing. Thank you. A Alex has her hand up. Sorry. Thank you, Paul. Alex? Yeah, it's not for Colliers. Um, I just wanted, uh, Alex Lopez, our newest member, I know he's not sworn in yet, but I didn't know if he could be promoted since he's still technically part of this group and our newest member, he's in the audience. So I, I'm not sure that he's, he can be part of the meeting yet unless he's been sworn in. I'm thinking Anika was part of our first meeting. She just didn't vote was how we handled it. So I assumed we'd do the same here. But if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. I'd be instructed by the town manager. So what is the protocol? I, I think that um, Mr. Lopez took the time to be here. We should invite him into the room. Great. Okay. Alex Lopez. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How about y'all? Well, we're thrilled to see you and grateful that you've uh, agreed to uh, work on the committee and look forward to uh, the work that we will all do together. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Next is a, uh, the subcommittee reports, which I think can be brief. Subcommittees have not met yet. However, we do have meeting dates. Uh, the design subcommittee will meet on Friday the 4th at 9 a.m. And then the outreach committee is scheduled to meet on Thursday the 8th at 4 p.m. So 
uh, we are we are really eager to get uh, eager to get started. Okay, any questions about the subcommittees? Okay. Next item is number six on the agenda, which is correspondence. We want you to be sure that you uh, are seeing the proposal from the Kestrel Land Trust uh, to move uh, the Kinsey Garden uh, from the back of the library to their new site on Bay Road. And the this proposal was reviewed by the Buildings and Grounds Committee of the Jones Library Board of Trustees and reviewed and approved by the Board of Trustees itself, pending a, a necessary consultation with the Historic Commission. Uh, anybody have any questions about that correspondence? Look, I, I, I'm on this meeting, so I'm just going to sit here quietly because this is not meeting is not going to end in two minutes, right? I mean, that's so. Austin, I have a question. Thank you, Sean. So, what do we do with that? Is um, we don't have a designer on board yet. We, we sort of going through schematic. We have to kind of redo the schematics or look at the schematics and dive into design. Should we just have sort of a, a listing of these types of things as they come up of considerations for the designers to review? Yeah. I think that's that's right, and uh, the architect will have to work with a landscape architect for the the the, the landscaping at the building. But uh, this involves taking this from the property and replanting it. Sharon, did you want to say anything else about that? Sure, sure. Um, so. Yeah, so buildings and facilities approved it and the Board of Trustees approved it. Uh, and the Kestrel group is really excited about this. We, I have a question into the town's historic commission because we have a historic preservation restriction on the building. Uh, it, it's building and grounds. And so we need to look into the possibility of having to go before the town's uh, historic commission to, to get approval for this. But assuming that that all of that will go beautifully, the library trustees uh, has another committee, the gardens advisory committee. Um, when I know that we can do this, I will call that group together to meet and they can work with the Kestrel folks. And I hope that we can all help with the fundraising, all, I don't know, us here in this meeting, as well as, you know, using the library, social media resources. And um, they'll be asking for uh, donations because moving these uh, plantings will be kind of expensive. Um, and they'll take what they can. You know, the goal is to keep uh, as much of the garden intact as possible. Uh, as so, as well as there are benches and the um, the stones that are inlaid into the into the sidewalk. So, uh, as much as they can afford to take uh, uh, that can be moved, uh, will help them move it. And then, and then whatever's left, our architects will work with their landscape architects, which we really haven't. We haven't done much work on, so it's not like we've gone many steps ahead and now we'll have to stop and think where this will be fine. Um, so whatever's left over is what our landscape design team will be working with and um, move forward from there. It's, it's great. It's really, it's, it can work out really quite lovely, really beautifully. Thank you. Uh, Anika, just one, one thing. I want to be clear that we we have an idea of a preliminary landscape plan, which was developed in, or as the schematics were being developed, but it's just that it was a preliminary plan and there's much work to be done. Anika. So, excuse me if you just covered this, Sharon, but when is the, when is this expected to happen? When will the garden move in? Uh, so what they were saying, if, if I remember correctly, this spring, they would do some pruning and then either this fall of 2022 or the spring of 2023 is when the actual moving would happen. Great. Other questions about the Kestrel Land Trust proposal? It, it's, it's a great thing for 
the town, I mean, these two great organizations, the Kestrel Trust and the library, it's really, it seems like a great thing for both. Alex. Thanks. Um, and thanks for letting me crash in here today. Uh, just wanted to ask um, how I hear that there's been a lot of internal communication and approval of this, but just how it has been communicated um, or gotten buy-in from the wider community, uh, including people who might be paying attention to the land trust and or the library. Well, I don't think we've had broad consultation with the community, um, except that the meetings in which these things were discussed are open meetings, so they're noticed and people can come, but we did not undertake a kind of broad community outreach about uh, the relocation of the garden. Um, Alex, is your hand still, are you still up? No, I just, I get stuck with my hand up. Okay. For a while. Sorry, it's a thing I do. It's okay. Not a, not a, not a problem. All right. Other questions about the Kester Land Trust. All right, Alex. We're gonna have to work on this, Alex. We can't even do Alex L because that doesn't even work. I, <laughs> um, so, Alex, one additional thing too. So, the garden was actually a memorial garden um, in memory of uh, somebody who had passed, and the wife who put all of this forth back in the day is actually thrilled about this wrote a letter in support of it um and so that's one of so while we haven't done a broader like austin said um it's 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 part of the wishes of of the of the wife of the person whose memory the garden was in so it seems like the right thing to do sean did i see your hand yeah i guess i was just gonna ask quickly so is, is this type of thing something that would go to the design subcommittee of this body or is it sort of straightforward enough that it that that doesn't need to happen it seems like it's gone through a lot of subcommittees i'm just curious uh, whether I'm, it needs to go through one more or not i'm not sure what the this is the proposal to move the garden. yeah the proposal to move the gardens and to from one side of the of the library to the other is that something that would go through the design subcommittee or not well, it's up to the people on the design subcommittee, but my own view is no, that it's the question of moving the garden uh, is not so much about the design that's gonna be worked out uh, with the landscape architects about what the gardening will be. But if others feel differently, we can talk about it in the design um, committee about whether or not people think it's an appropriate thing to do or would compromise the design of the design of the library. You know, I think for just a little bit more, um, a little bit more background. So everybody realizes that during construction, you know, stuff, things are going to happen back there. And, and so the, the worry was for the plants uh, that are in existence. So when this proposal came along, it, 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 it solved so many problems. So, um, so I feel like what would end up going to the design committee would be whatever's left over. Um, uh, so as long as the historic commission says this is okay, if they have to say it's okay, um, it, it seems like there's nothing bad that could come of this. Great. Okay, other questions, observations about the Kestrel Land Trust? Okay, next item, topics not anticipated by the chair. Is there anything that's come up in the last 48? Paul. Yes, well, just to report, we already know this, but the council voted unanimously last night to approve Alex's appointment. Um, I'm not, he probably hasn't, I know Angela's already done the letter, whether it's gotten to him or not. And um, so th that's your only, your only thing now to do, Alex, is at some point come into the town clerk's office and get sworn in. Uh, that's right, <laughs> exactly that. Um, and the other thing is that, uh, just to make sure Alex is aware that um, I think his role, his, he has a seat on the outreach committee. I think that we designated this, his, the incoming appointee. And so whenever that meeting is, I hope Alex is aware of that. Uh, and also to alert us that if, you know, you invited people to come to those out, those um, subcommittees, 
if there's going to be a quorum of this body at those committees, that's going to be if we're going to be talking about something, we should post it, post it as a committee of the whole. It doesn't mean you can't attend, but if you're going to participate in the discussion or want to expect to participate in the discussion, if we're going to have a quorum, the, this body should be a com, you know posted as such. Could you just that say sense? that? No, well, I, it it made perfect sense, but I didn't understand it. So if if people, <laughs> if people want to attend as attendees that's fine you don't need to notice it right but the, if, what, what would happen beyond that so if if we were in a room and you said um and, and you're in your subcommittee and you say oh austin's in the audience or paul is in the audience let's bring them into the room and you're not bringing anybody else into the room who's in I the see. attendee okay. section Good. um then that means they're acting as part of their role here so just we just want to make sure that we honor the integrity of the subcommittee group as opposed to we just don't want any violations of the open meeting law of this group so what again paul just to be clear what i'm hearing you on say is that subcommittees should function as subcommittees and unless it was something urgent or unusual not bring mem other members of the committee into the room right and sometimes that's done inadvertently people are yeah. courteous right it's not intended yeah yeah okay all right next thank you anything else that we not anticipated okay next is opportunity for public comment we have five attendees of uh, any public comment I see one hand up, Angela, what do we do? There we go. So, Mary? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you for attending. <laughs> Mary Sarah from Pine Street, North Amherst. Um, and I, uh, I don't know whether it's a question or a comment, but I know you're gonna have um, two things coming up about buildings. Uh, one would be, closing the North Amherst Library and moving the books somewhere. And the other would be moving the books for the big Jones Library um, renovation. And I was curious if um, the space in the North Amherst School has been considered, if that space is still available that the family center was in. Um, so I don't know whether this is appropriate for this committee or, or another one. But I was just, if the North Amherst Library closes and is consolidated with South Amherst, clearly it's just closed because North Amherst people won't go to South Amherst. They'll go to the Jones. But I was thinking as a way of, of keeping the books that maybe there would be a space in the North old North Amherst school. So that's Thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. As I understand it, the North Amherst Library and what happens at the North Amherst Library is not part of our charge. Okay. Uh, so I don't think we can help you on this, though we would be uh, happy to communicate with you uh, through the board, the, the Library Board of Trustees. Okay, other questions? Other public comment? Okay, seeing none, motion to adjourn. By the way, I just wanna say this, I really appreciate the efficiency because it's still light out, I can go out and play golf, except I don't play golf. So <laughs> it was just a thought. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Alex, second. So, can I just, so you can just declare the motion, the meeting adjourns. Otherwise, so we don't have to no, do a I, roll call I, vote. I you like, don't like doing I like, that. Okay. No, I like doing this. Fair enough. Him, I'm not in any hurry to get through this, Paul. <laughs> you have golf waiting for you. Call me out. Oh my God. So vote yes to adjourns. <laughs> do it quickly so Paul will be satisfied. Christine. Yes. Alex. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Anika. Yes. Sean. Yes. George. Yes. Paul. Yes. <laughs> and I vote yes. Okay, it's fabulous. It's nice to see you all. Stay well. Don't forget the two committee meetings design on May 4th at 9 o'clock 
and outreach on Thursday the 8th at four o'clock. Stay well, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Alex. You. Thanks, Paula.